Friends, we are going to begin the funeral service for Mrs. Diane Cohn. I'd ask you kindly, if you have a cell phone, to place it in a silent mode or turn it completely off at this time. I'd also like to welcome anyone who is here for the family via live stream. Thank you for attending as well. Services will be conducted by Rabbi Barry Schechter of Congregation Cole Emmett in Skokie. Miss Mole David, Adonai, Mi Yagubiolecha, Mi Ishkon, Mi Harekotchecha, Holech Tamim, Ufoilet Sehedek. Vdover met Bilvavo, Lora Galileshono, Lora Salre Hurra, Beher Palonasa, Alkara, Nivze Peinav Nimas, Vietiere Adonai Habeid. Nishpat Rara Vilaya Mir Kaspo Lonatan Beneshech Vishok Hadana Kilolakach Al Seyle Loimot Liaholam God who may abide in your house? Who may dwell in your holy mountain? Those who are upright, who do justly, who speak the truth within their hearts, who do not slander others or wrong them or bring shame upon them, who give their word and come what may do not retract, who do not exploit others. Those who live in this way shall never be shaken. Dear friends, we're here for a sad and difficult occasion to say goodbye, which is one of the most difficult things that we can ever do, but also to pay tribute and to honor the memory, and even if possible, to celebrate the life of Diane, Diane Cohen, the daughter of Dora and Jacob. In Hebrew, her name was Dina. And uh, her family is here, but first I want to mention her life's partner, Philip. Uh, they, part, they, who, they were married for, I have to read this again to be sure I'm getting it right, 64 years. I'm going to say that again in case you didn't hear that. 64 years. Uh, we have the children, of course, Doris, Marsha and her Miguel, Judy and her husband, William. And also, of course, the son of her heart, Sam. And grandchildren, Michelle and her Carrie, Rachel and her Peter, Zachary and his Heidi, and great-grandchildren, Ashley and Hallie, Pacey and Carly, and Emma. I should also mention her late uh, siblings, her late sister Eve and Eve's late husband Sam, her late brother Morris or Sonny and his late Juliet. And we have nephews and nieces, Francine, Anita and her Mort, Bobby, David and his Maria, Amy and her Frank, Marnie and the late Jerry. I hope I got everyone in. We're going to begin by hearing from the family. So I'm going to call first of, uh, of all upon uh, Michelle to come and speak to us about her grandmother. Oh, accompanied by Kerry. <laughs> yes, well first thank you everyone for coming on a holiday today. It really means a lot to our family. Um, 
Today we come together to celebrate the life of our beloved matriarch, Grandma Diane. We all know how lucky we were to have her in our lives for as long as we did. Grandma achieved a major milestone of living over 100 years. And I was personally fortunate to have her as my cute little bestie grandma for 54 years. It can be rare for a grandparent and grandchild relationship to be so essential and so long lasting. But our grandma was that special kind of person that you just wanted to be with all the time. Um, we grew up in a very close family. Um, we spent a lot of our childhood at family dinners. Um, Rachel, Zach and I have many special memories when we were younger some of which included our Friday night sleepovers at our grandma and grandpa's house where we'd cook and play lots of card games and rummy cue and dominoes, weekend trips to our grandparents' houseboat on the Mississippi River where we had all kinds of adventures. Um, also, when we were little, every year our grandma would take us downtown. We got to ride the subway and the L. It was very exciting. And we'd go downtown to see all the Christmas windows at Marshall Fields. Um, we are also so fortunate to have our whole family together every Christmas in Puerto Vallarta. We have so many memories with the kids and with our grandparents and our whole family, and that was really special to us as well. And then also many summer weekends at our home in New Buffalo. That again, we had a time to relax and celebrate and have fun together. Um, I was lucky to spend so much time with my grandma. My favorite memories are not only the big events, but also the small day-to-day -day ones. Um, as we got older, Grandma became more of an advisor to us. She was always willing to lend an ear and help us with whatever challenges we faced. And although she didn't come from any great means, Grandma was always generous with us and was always there to lend an ear, lend a hand, or even a few dollars whenever we needed it most. When we met our spouses, she treated Carrie, Peter, and Heidi as her own grandchildren and loved them just as much as us. She loved getting to know all of our extended in-laws and their families as well. Um, then starting 23 years ago, along came the beginning of all the great grandchildren, with Ashley and Hallie and Pacey and Carly and Emma. And Grandma kept right up with them. She was always available to babysit when they were younger. And as they aged, Grandma was right there with them. She was like our little energizer bunny. Um, Grandma never missed any of the sports, their dance recitals, tennis matches, gymnastics meets, and even made it to an occasional Friday Night Lights football game to watch Hallie cheer. Um, Great Grandma Diane went to every big school event. She went to all the awards ceremonies and all the graduations. She loved all her little greats and couldn't wait to hear more about their big and small accomplishments. In fact, whenever we went out, she would proudly tell people that we were four generations. She loved to tell everyone, there's four generations. When we were growing up, Grandma was always working. She was a hard worker, and she loved her job at Weber Pharmacy. And we loved it, too, because she would always bring us home candy. Um, she instilled a strong, self of, a strong sense of self and a strong work ethic into all of us. And I think that helped contribute to our desire to have successful careers of our own. In fact, one of her most proud moments was hearing about both my girls' jobs throughout high school and college and how well they were doing. And she'd always say, those girls are so amazing. You know, they don't have to work. Their father would do anything for them, but they choose to work. And she was so, showed so much pride in all their accomplishments. We are so fortunate that we are all able to be together to help celebrate her 100th birthday in February. She had the drive-by parade led by the Skokie police. She had happy birthday signs that lit up in the township and also in Skokie. She had birthday cards sent from random people, thank you, Rachel, and even a congratulatory letter from President Biden. She was filled with joy and happiness and it seemed like she would live forever. Last, about nine years ago, Grandma moved in with my mom and Sam and I loved our weekly visits. The best part of visiting Grandma was watching her face light up when any of us walked in with a big hello, and her general excitement to hear what was new with any of us and the kids. I know how special that time was for all of us, especially for my mom and Sam, 
And I just want to acknowledge what an amazing job they did taking care of Grandma for all these years. Their love and devotion allowed her to thrive at home and definitely contributed to her longevity. So today we will celebrate her beautiful life and my beautiful grandma, and she will always be with us in our hearts. Thank you, thank you, Michelle, for those lovely words. And now <clears throat> we're going to hear from Rachel. I don't know how Michelle does it, but I'm going to be crying the whole time. <laughs> anyway. Oh, look, there's a little clock here so I can see how many minutes I'm talking. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, mine is not as well planned <laughs> as Michelle's. What I did was just a couple of thoughts um, when I was, you know, deciding what I was going to say about grandma. I was thinking, you know, for me, grandma is like a bunch of, you know, just fun, small, happy memories, you know, all put together. And um, so what, what I have is grandma memories from A to Z. <laughs> um, so bear with me. Um, for A, allowance. Grandma was always the, you know, not, not necessarily the allowance giver, but she would, you know, elbow grandpa to give us all uh, a few bucks when we were kids. I remember getting a raise to, you know, $3 a week. So, um, B, the boat, you know, Michelle talked about the boat. We all have a lot of fun memories about being on the boat um, in the summertime. Um, C, the candy closet. Um, that was obviously, as kids, our favorite part of uh, Friday dinners was the candy closet uh, at Grandma's. I think that it got uh, down drafted to a candy drawer as she moved. Um, D, <clears throat> go to bed, damn it. <laughs> that was <laughs> the first and one of the only times that we ever heard, I ever heard grandma swear, and it was at me and Zach for not going to bed fast enough at one of the sleepovers that we had at her house, and I remember we just... <sighs> We just stopped cold in our tracks because we were just like so surprised to hear her say a mean or you know word. She's never in my life, you know, she never said a mean word pretty much about almost anyone, except the only other time I heard her use a swear word, which I won't mention here, was a much more severe swear word she used recently while describing <coughs> Trump. Um, <laughs> e was for the electric comb that would get pulled out at grandma's house, she, some e medieval torture device that she had <laughs> that was used to comb out, especially my ridiculous knotted hair that would form that would never get brushed out in time. So Michelle and I suffered through the electric comb on occasion at grandma's house. Uh, F for f our Friday night dinners, which was mentioned, and many of you here were all a part of. You know, if I had to have, you know, raise your hand, if you've ever been at Grandma's house for a Friday night dinner, I think almost everyone's hand would go up. Um, G, the green shag rug at her apartment that we used to uh, pretend was grass and mow when we used to uh, stay over at Grandma's house with one of those old crumb <laughs> picker-upper vacuum cleaners she used to have. H was for Hanukkah. We all looked forward to those, the little envelopes with the circles cut out <laughs> in them. You see which face you would get. You'd hope for Grant, right? Or, you know, you'd get, you'd get a face 
looking at you. She'd always give us money for Hanukkah. Eyes for ice cream. Recently, you know, in her older years, she had uh, ice cream every night before she went to bed. Sammy would give her her ice cream every night. Um, Jay, journalism. Grandma used to read, you know, papers. She got all the papers. She would always watch the news. She'd keep up with, you know, all the news and everything. Um, K, Kishki, Kasha, Varnishkas, Kanishes. She had all the Jewish food at her house. Um, and of course, L, liver. I remember her grinding the liver on the old uh, silver grinding machine. She'd either be grinding it for chopped liver for us or, of course, cooking it for her pets. <laughs> she would feed the, the animals liver. She'd cook specially just for the cats or whatever, the liver. M, she had a little music table. I think Marcia uh, has it now. Little music table that in her front room, I just remember, you know, the ones that have the little pokey, the little wheel that turns and makes, uh, I just remember thinking that was like magic when I was a kid. Um, oh, <laughs> and nail polish. I remember she, <laughs> she had always had a hard time growing out her nails. And one time she told us she found this magic nail polish. She couldn't believe, she said, look at my nails. And we all said, oh, wow, she really did. She had this na nails that had grown. And she said, yes, she said, it's this magic nail polish. You put it on every day for seven days. And I've been doing it in a little bit. Well, we all wanted to know what was this magic nail polish she had. And we read the, it was, read the nail polish. It was just regular nail polish. It was a base coat nail polish. It, it, she read it wrong. It said, apply once every seven days. But because she had been using it every single day, her nails grew, and she was very, very happy about that. Um, oh, 100, of course, she lived to 100, but she didn't want to live, as you know, to what age? 120. 120. Uh, she did not want to live to 120. She would tell us that in Yiddish all the time. Um, P, of course, for pharmacy, both for where she worked and where she lived. A Q, the queen. We referred to her as the queen whenever we went over to her house. She would, um, that's one of uh, my daughter's favorite memories, Carly, of hers, when she would just, she, they had a chair um, rail, you know, to help get up and down the stairs. And we would come over and she'd come out of her room and she would just sit in the chair on the top of the stairs and just look over at everybody down there. She wouldn't come down, she would just look. And we would come inside and we'd wave when she'd come out of her room and say, you know, the queen, the queen is here. Um, um, R, I put remission. You know, she, for those of you know, she's you know, a four-time cancer survivor. Um, she made it, you know, to 100. S, sleepovers, of course. Those are our favorite memories of when we were kids, sleeping over on Friday nights. Um, T, I put television, especially as she got older. She was always watching television. She loved to watch it. I remember her sitting in the den in her apartment always with her, her husband watching television. Um, you, I put unafraid. I still remember when she was 80 years old in Mexico. What was she doing? Sitting on the beach, relaxing? Nope. Parasailing. Up on, <laughs> went up on the being dragged around by a speedboat in the air. There she was. V, I put voracious reader. She was always, you know, always reading, reading, reading books, 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 magazines, whatever it was. She'd get a whole bag of books, always be reading books. W, I put World War II. She was always, you know, she was obviously, you know, part of that generation. Her husband went to fight. And she, of course, had the box of letters that he would write home to her that she saved and she was very proud of. Um, and then uh, for X, that was a tough one, but I found one. Xenial. Um, she was hospitable to guests and always welcoming others. Um, for Y, Michelle will know about this, of course, the first thing that came to my mind was yellow earrings. Michelle and I, one of our favorite activities on Saturday mornings, for some reason, we would go into grandma's bedroom and open up her jewelry drawer, and she had these little yellow clip-on earrings that, for us, 
No, it wasn't fun to try them on. It was fun to open up her front window of her apartment and throw them out onto the grass where they, then we would go and try to find them. That was our fun activity. And finally, Z, her zodiac sign was Aquarius, and her traits as an Aquarius were um, being progressive, original, independent, and a humanitarian. And I think that's what she was. Um, I have one more thing I wanted to read. Um, you know, a lot of people here, I heard as everyone was talking, they were saying, hey, you know, obviously we're sad that grandma has passed, but this is a celebration. And I agree with that. Um, this uh, says, I thought this was a, a fitting poem. It says, feel no guilt in laughter. She knows how much you care. Feel no sorrow in a smile that she's not here to share. You cannot grieve forever. She would not want you to. She'd hope that you would carry on the way you always do. So talk about the good times and the ways you showed you cared, the days you spent together, all the happiness you shared. Let memories surround you. A word someone might say will suddenly recapture a time, an hour, a day that brings her back as clearly as though she was still here and fills you with the feelings that say she's always near. For if you keep those moments, you will never be apart, and they will live forever safely locked within your heart. Love it, Grandma. Thank you, thank you, Rachel, for that delightful account. And now we're going to have uh, Ashley and Hallie. I'm sorry, did I, I miss, I'm, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry, Zach. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, bring some levity to the situation. Um, good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm Diane's youngest grandchild, Zach Jacobson, this is Heidi. Uh, before I get started, um, I know there's probably some people watching uh, live or maybe later. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, <laughs> also, I'd like to thank my Aunt Doris uh, for taking such good care of Grandma. Uh, <clears throat> I know it wasn't easy. Um, Sam, what, what a mensch. Uh, okay, um, we're all here to honor my grandma Diane, our grandma Diane, uh, and show our love and support for all the, the next generations. Um, and speaking of generations, she was the last of, of her generation, uh, the, the greatest generation. She's the matriarch of our, our small family. Uh, there's three children, my mom and aunts. They had three children, me and my two cousins. Uh, and we've all had five children. Uh, and it's these these five children, these great grandchildren, that I think she would really want me to talk to today. Um, everyone else, go ahead and check her email. Uh, just kidding. Um, I can't really add more to what everyone before me has already shared. Um, summarizing your your great grandma's life, a full century, uh, in a short speech just doesn't really do her justice. Uh, plus, my memories are mine, uh, not yours. You're going to have your own memories. Um, over the years, uh, you're, you'll find those memories of yours are going to change. Um, you won't know if they're true memories, uh, memories of photos, videos, or, or just stories you've heard over and over again, like the time someone broke in and stole $10 worth of pennies that we used to use on Friday night card games. Did that really happen? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so what can you learn uh, from Grandma Diane's life? Uh, what, kind, what bits of wisdom can you take from her uh, to make your life better? You can be kind, uh, open your home, your kitchen, uh, and your heart to others, uh, and, and they'll remember that kindness for years to come. Always have a steak in the freezer just in case. Oh boy, was well, she disappointed when I stopped eating meat eight years ago. 
<laughs> what else? Uh, you can get out of town, see the world, travel, experience new cultures. Uh, you'll have great new stories to tell, like the time she picked up the wrong suitcase. <laughs> Even if you aren't going across the pond, maybe you're just going to the other side of Lake Michigan, or going halfway across the Mississippi River. Get out there, see the world, meet new people, make new friends, have fun. Um, and when you need to get around and you don't know how to drive, it's easy. You just walk to the Skokie Swift, take it to Howard, transfer to the red line, not Fullerton, hop on the brown line to Diversity, take the Diversity bus to Sheridan, just like Grandma used to do for years. It builds much more character than taking an Uber. Uh, how about this pro of wisdom? Um, enjoy what you do every day. Grandma Diane worked at a pharmacy for so long that nobody knows for sure if it was 50 years or 60 years. It was a long time. If she didn't enjoy her, her days at Weber Pharmacy and later Stone Pharmacy, she sure did a good job of hiding it. We were all disappointed when she retired because that meant the end to the endless supply of contact lens solution and candy. But I digress. Find something in life that you enjoy doing it and doing it and do it for as long as you want. Play canasta with your friends every week for 70 years if that's, make, make, if that's what makes you feel happy. Ashley, Hallie, Carly, Pacey, Emma, I, I hope you each learned something from your great grandma that makes your life better. I know she was very proud of you all. You are her legacy. Keep making her proud and you too will have a happy, fulfilling life. No pressure. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Zach, also for those lovely words. And now uh, we'll have Ashley and Hallie. We're moving on to the next generation. Hmm? Okay. Um, thank you to everyone who came to celebrate my great grandma's wonderful life. Grandma Diane was a huge part of my life as well as Ashley Pacey's, Carly's, and Emma's. Having 21 years with Grandma Diane was really amazing, and getting to live so close and spend time with her was truly special. From dinners at the farm to coming to my cheerleading games and watching us graduate middle school, high school, and even college. Grandma Diane lived a life surrounded by a family who loved her so much. Grandma Diane was no ordinary great-grandma. She went on vacations with us to Mexico, and she even came on a cruise ship. We hung out so much, and she told us so many stories and shared such important wisdom with us that I will remember forever. One of my favorite memories with Grandma Diane was when we were little, and we would go over to her apartment. Even though I was so young, I vividly remember exactly what her apartment looked like because we got to spend so much time there. I loved going to the park across the street with her and then going back to play card games like War and Solitaire. I'm grateful that I got to grow up knowing and having an incredible relationship with not only Bubby, and, but also Grandma Diane. One of Grandma Diane's favorite stories to tell was again about the suitcase and her Paris trip with her sister. She would tell me how she went to Paris and she accidentally grabbed the wrong suitcase only to find out it was a man's suitcase so she had to go back to the airport to get hers. She loved telling stories and I loved getting to listen to them. Grandma Diane was a trooper and she lived an incredible 100 years. At 99, she was still coming over to her house for dinners and gatherings. Grandma Diane loved all her great-grandchildren so much. It was truly amazing that she lived to know her five grandchildren ranging from 9 to 23 years old. We'll all miss Grandma Diane so much. She believed in us so much and helped us grow as people. Thank you.
Well, I could tell you this. Um, <clears throat> I'm often, maybe too often, called upon to officiate at funerals of people I know and people I don't know, people I just get to meet. But I don't think I've ever seen four generations. I may have seen four generations, but not like this. Not like this. If she went around saying how proud she was of having four generations, she was absolutely right. She was right to be proud. I know sometimes people say pride is a bad thing. No, 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 no. She was absolutely right. Because it's not just, it's not just that Diane had such wonderful longevity. Okay, not 120. All right. She got her wish. Because uh, as you know, in Yiddish, we always wish people you should live biz hundred zwanzig till 120. Why? We're not sure. But Moses, according to the biblical account, lived till he was 120. I don't know if he wanted to. Uh, I don't think he was asked. Um, but uh, she lived to 100. So there's this longevity. And there's these four generations. You know, we just had a, two great granddaughters who didn't know their great grandmother um, as just someone who was spoken about because she's not there alive anymore, or even someone who is alive, but they know them distantly and vaguely because they can't communicate or they're in such bad shape that they, can't, they don't know what's going on. No. They had a relationship with them. And, and we're not talking about great-grandchildren who are three years old. But, again, it's not just that. It's not just the length of time and the number of generations. Those have to do with numbers, with quantities. But we are talking about qualities here. We're talking about the kinds of things that you all spoke about, every one of you, in your own different ways. Um, family. Zach, you went through this, but you all did, really, in different ways. Friday night dinner. The whole family. Anyone who wanted to be there, right? People would bring boyfriends. Kids would bring boyfriends. Future husbands. People who had nowhere else to eat would come. So, an open house. An open house. Now, when we were talking, you remember, I was talking to you, Michelle, and to you, uh, Doris, but, I mean, others were there as well. And you told me that, well, first of all, there, there are three children, husband, three children, so there are five people in the household. And then you tell me that after working when she, for a pencil factory when she was younger, she worked for the Weber Pharmacy on Diversity and Broadway till she was 80. 80. Now, quite apart from the fact that the Weber Pharmacy was gracious enough to contribute vast supplies of candy to the entire family. I mean, quite apart from that, and other things too. Uh, for a pharmacy to supply you all with these wonderful health foods is a great blessing. But quite apart from that fact, quite apart from that fact, I said to you, you've got a family, there's, there's five people in the house. And she's cooking, and she's actually doing everything for you. And she's also working full time. I said, this is a, I said, there's a lot of energy there. This is, a woman's a dynamo. And you said, I think it was you, Michelle. Was it you, Michelle, or you, Doris? That you, or maybe it was you, Doris. You said that this didn't strike you as anything unusual because you grew up with it. You know, the families that we grow up in, we always assume that everyone else has the same. And when we get up and go out into the world, we see that's not the case at all. That all families, families differ from each other. So here you have this lady who works. I mean, I was trying to, th I think her day must have had 25 or 26 hours in it, something like that. 
you know, she's playing cards for, as you said, we don't know, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, could be anything, right? You said canasta, you told me kaluki, I, I, maybe they, they um, had, there's a bowling, she was on a bowling team as well. I mean, how many hours in the day were there for this lady? And how did she stay awake for all of them? I mean, but again, that has to do with energy. But this bringing people together, bringing people together, cooking for By the way, when I asked you about, remember I asked you about the food? Doris, remember? So you mentioned, you said steak. And you said, I don't know how she did it, but her steak was the most marvelous thing. There was something magical. Magic steak. And you also mentioned chopped liver. And then I hear, who was it? I think it was you, um, uh, I think it was you, Rachel, in one of the alphabet. You, when you got to the letter K, all of a sudden we had a, a flood. That doesn't begin with K. Nor does this one, but it sounds like this. A cacophony of foods. Now I'm looking for the K, you see. So, we have kishka and kashavanishkas and knishas. 120, if you eat enough of that, I don't know how you can get to 20. Anyway, so you have these, all, these, all these wonderful foods that she made and that you love to eat. And you never heard her raise a voice, that's what you told me. I think that I heard that you, the, the word damn it was used to get to help to assist people in arriving in their beds. And uh, another epithet, this time a noun, to describe a past president of the United States. And please later tell me what it was. And if you're embarrassed to tell me what it was, write it down, fold it up, give it to me, and I promise I'll eat the paper later. Uh, and these other lovely memories that you that you all spoke about, but not just memories. You know, you you said uh, Michelle that you, she was someone you wanted to be. With. You wanted to be with her. You just wanted to be. This is someone you really love to be with. I mean, the last few years, obviously, um, Doris and Sam, you. Both of you did more than is required by normal generosity, a decency, and by Jewish law. Honor your father and mother. Well, you were the honorary son. She was your honorary mother. She was your mother. And you did more than is required. Much, much more. You were wonderful wonderful what you you both did for her with her and and what love there is in that but what love all of you have because this is the thing about this lady love she poured it out effortlessly it, it wasn't an effort she didn't have to force herself it was part of her and because of that you poured it back so you ha we have both here we have both this quality and because of at least genes, I imagine, this wonderful longevity. And thank God, a longevity, you know, she was there physically till just almost the end and mentally, which is such a blessing. And all these generations, as I said, we, we don't know how these things happen. We don't know what it is that enables some to live longer, some less time. But we do know something about we can control, to some extent, the kind of person that we are. We do have free will. And when you have someone who rejoices in her children, in her grandchildren, in her great-grandchildren, and really in just about everyone. And, to, and rejoices when new people come into the family and the, the spouses of children are children. And the, the husbands and wives of children, the husbands and wives, the friends of grandchildren are grandchildren. And so it goes on. So 
these are, when we talk about additions to the family, they actually become part of the family. So think of all this. I think uh, all of you mentioned this. Um, Zach, you talked about learning, learning from her life. You know, in our prayers, when we, uh, for example, when we say the grace after meals, the Birkat Amazon, the benching, if our parents are present, we say a prayer for them. Now, in Hebrew, you may remember this from Hillel Torah. In Hebrew, uh, my mother, well, mother is Ima, right? Aim, Ima. And my mother is Imi. Do we say that? Do we just say that word, Imi, that word alone? No. We say, Imi, I don't know if it's familiar to you, Imi Morati. What does that mean? My mother, my teacher. My mother, my teacher. We're saying for a father. A parent should be a teacher. And here was the teacher par excellence. Not just because she said, go to sleep, the other word. No. Not just by instruction, not just by direction, by telling you, but by example. By example. There is so much to take from this life. There's so much to take from this life. So take whatever you can, whenever you can. If sometimes there's a, someone that you are annoyed with, which happens, and you feel that you might, you, you slam the door on them, you want to shut them out of your life. It happens as well. It happens to all of us. But it may happen that such a moment, just before you do this, I'm not saying it will happen, it may happen, that you think of Diane and this openness, this embracing, this open doors, this open house. And you may think to yourself, you know, it'll be like a little voice, you know, we always have this little voice that says, well, was it really that bad? Was it really that bad? You're in a temper, you can't hear it, you know. And you can't hear that little voice, but... If you think of Diana at that moment, that little voice may become stronger. and You may think, well, maybe this door can stay open. Maybe it's not that bad. It won't always happen. It may not always be the case. But when it does happen, when you, or I for that matter, act better just because of thinking of her, then you see she lives on at that moment. Then you come into the inheritance that she has left you, which is a wonderful inheritance. So, uh, she's at peace now. Although we don't understand, we don't know what happens after we go. There is a long Jewish tradition of, a long Jewish tradition that it does go on in some way that we cannot understand. Uh, I've been asked to speak about this and never by a Jewish organization. I've spoken in Catholic churches about the Jewish, they ask me, what is the Jewish view of life after death? And I say to them, if you say the Jewish view, you don't know anything about Jewish people because we argue with each other. There's no view. There's views. We all contradict each other, as do the rabbis. In fact, Maimonides, our greatest scholar, was so Jewish, he was so Jewish that he didn't need anyone else to contradict him. He contradicted himself. He gave two views which are flatly in contradiction to each other. So there is something afterwards we we cannot understand this um i'm quite sure in any sense that we can understand that she's already she's already made a host greeted her her old family made a host of friends has insisted that certain people go to bed on time no i'm joking about that of course um but of course in the sense that we can understand she is at peace now and of her I say, Tahi nishmata tsurura bitsror ha chayim. Chayim is life. May her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. And to her I say, Diane, Dina, the daughter of Dora and Jacob, Lachi b'shalom, gay in Frieden, go in peace. Abalech din gan Eden, may your repose be in paradise. You will never be forgotten. You'll always be remembered in love by those who knew you and loved you, those who knew you and you loved. Amen. 
We're going to read the 23rd Psalm now. If you would open these little uh, pamphlets. Did you get this? Did everyone get one? Yeah. Please read with me. Uh, just open it. It's on the top left. Let's read together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Could I ask you to stand, please? If it's difficult for you to stand, then just stay seated. It's perfectly okay. Now, I'm going to ask those of you with the... With, yeah, you, you really... You, if, it's a, if it's a problem... All right. So, if you're wearing a ribbon, uh, would you please, if you can, uh, at the bottom of the ribbon, this horizontal part, just tear up a little bit in the middle. If you can't do it yourself, someone else will help you. Just te uh, Can you do it? If there's anyone with a problem, can you help them? Yeah. No, it's okay. It's all right. So I'm going to say, now those of you with the ribbon, we're going to say a bracha, a blessing that we always say on these occasions. If anyone else wants to join, you can do so. It's not, the blessing is not in there. I, I will say it with you. It begins the usual way of a blessing. You probably know, Baruch Atad, and I, I'm sure you know that, but you can just say with me uh, the last two words are the, are the ones I have to tell you. So let's begin. Baruch at Ado Elo Dayan Hoemes, which means blessed be the true judge. That's what we say when we suffer a loss. El Malerachamim Shachain Bamramim Hamet Semenu Hanechona Tachat Kanefe Ashina. Mahalo Tkrashimatarim Kizara Kya Masirim Et Nishmaat Dina Bat Yakavadara Shala Khalyala Ma Bavu Shanach Nodrim it's Takabaras Karat Nishmata Vigana Tehe Minuchata Lachain Panarachamim Yastireha Vesetik and Afaliola Mim Vitzeror Vitzrorachim et Nishmata Adunai Unachlata Vetanuach Bishalom and Mishkava Venomar Amen passionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence unto the soul of Diane Cohen, the daughter of Dora and Jacob, who has entered eternity and in whose memory we offer charity. May her repose be in paradise. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace, and let us say, Amen. You may be seated. This does conclude the service here at the chapel. The family will receive condolences today upon their return from the cemetery at the Saperstein residence. And on the folders it says uh, it should be 1598. That's Constitution Drive in Glenview. 
and it's it says 1898 so it's 1598 constitution drive in glenview and they'll be sitting from the cemetery until nine o'clock today uh, we will also have the correct numbers on our website so you can go to them if there's any question about the address but until nine o'clock this evening um, if you are going to the cemetery the interment will take place at shalom memorial park at 1700 West Rand Road in Arlington Heights. The procession will be forming in the parking lot. Please keep in mind a few safety features while in the procession. Keep your bright headlights on at all times. Put your emergency blinkers on. Attach the orange funeral sticker to the passenger portion of your front windshield. And we'll also attach a flag to the roof of your car. And please stay as close as safety permits to the car in front of you. The following people have been selected to serve as pallbearers. When I call your name, if you'd please step forward. Sam Horn, David Koob, Carrie Saperstein, Peter Manning, Miguel Ritana, Zach Jacobson, Pacey Manning, and Josh Kainer. At this time, I would ask that everyone please rise as the family, the rabbi, and Mrs. Cohn are escorted from the chapel. Okay, you're going to put two by two behind the young lady here. And the family comes this way in the family room. 